am going to be getting the Platinum Trophy for Far Cry 5. And let's just say this journey through Montana is absolutely nuts. I can't die to a moose. I'm actually dead to a moose. <laughs> Now, Far Cry 5 has 51 trophies to collect, requiring me to beat the main story, as well as complete a ton of miscellaneous tasks, some of which are unexpectedly hilarious. Come here. <laughs> and some others which were worse than watching paint dry. Why would this be a trophy you have to get? Oh, this is so boring. Uh... The game begins with law enforcement agents flying into a remote compound in Hope County, Montana, with the primary goal of arresting none other than the main bad guy of the game, Joseph Seed. Crazy Joe here, also known as the father, is the leader of a religious terrorist cult known as Project at Eden's Gate. We take control of the rookie deputy in the group, and by the looks of things, this actually is his first rodeo. After trying to reason with Joseph and him not really playing ball, we do get the opportunity to arrest him. But my chat let me in on a little Easter egg that I honestly didn't believe was real. There's an ending right at the beginning when you don't arrest Joseph Seed. I think I've seen that. You can just not, and then the game ends. The game actually ends with like credits and everything. Take your friends and walk away. I will do that. I will leave you to it because you scare me. There we go. You put those cuffs on him. None of us get out of here alive. There you go. We completed the game. <laughs> I love that the credits roll. Like, come on, why wouldn't there be a trophy for that? Anyway, when we head back in and actually arrest Joseph, the Peggy's are, unsurprisingly, not too happy with their father being taken away. And uh, yeah, things get a bit crazy. They are literally crazy, aren't they? Oh shit. After barely escaping from the helicopter crash, we run away to go and hide and eventually link back up with the marshal who gives us our first gun to fight our way out. It does also feel like we were sent in with four people. Surely we would have more people. Let me in. Get out of my way, bitch. Oh, they're off the road. And after this car chase straight out of a Hollywood film, things take a turn for the worse. Why can't I shoot this guy? Oh my lord, okay. I think we might be a bit screwed. I'm flying like a bird. We wash up on the shore all alone until a stranger comes and finds us, taking us back to his bunker. Lucky for us, this is a good guy. His name is Dutch, and he's your typical elderly American patriot. And he's also a key resistance member who knows a lot about what is going on. But before he tells us anything, we get to customize our character. And with me obviously being your typical British pasty guy, I wanted to live out my American fantasy. Oh, it's got to be a mullet. We've got to fully embrace America. That is horrendous. Let's go for it. Choose some clothes. Oh, it's got to be a vest. American vest, yes. I do look very free. Dutch then lets us know that our crew that we were here with earlier have been captured and split up between Joseph's three heralds, who also happen to be his family. First up, there's his brother, John, and he's like the crazy religious type that uh, goes on and on about washing away your sins. Absolute nut job. Then you've got his adopted sister, Faith, and she's, um... Nice. But she is also in charge of the manufacture of the Bliss drug, which when taken, turns people to the side of Eden's Gate. And then finally, there's the other brother, Jacob, and he scares me a, a lot. So rather than one crazy bad guy, there's four of them. Fantastic. Anyway, each of the Heralds is in control of one of three regions on the map, and we'd have to take them out one by one in order to get to Joseph. But before we could go anywhere else, we needed to liberate Dutch's Island. To liberate a single region in Far Cry 5, we needed to fill up the resistance bar with resistance points. And to get resistance points, we would need to complete a bunch of activities within that region that we were trying to liberate. These activities range in scale from big ones like story and side missions and cult outposts to smaller activities activities like prepper stash puzzles, rescuing civilians, and destroying cult properties. Oh, and you can't forget about Clutch Nixons. No word of a lie, I would give my left nut to play a full game of Clutch Nixons. Uh, but we'll get to those later. Dutch's Island has a few starter activities to complete, and after filling the resistance meter, we liberate his island and get our first trophy. Aha, are we ready to liberate now? I think we are. Dutch's Island liberated complete. 
It really is. The Spark! We finally got a trophy. We've been playing for an hour. I decided to take on John's region first after watching this creepy broadcast that he sent out where it was revealed that he was the one who captured Deputy Hudson. So I began liberating the area, completing a bunch of smaller tasks before coming across my first clutch Nixon. These are basically these awesome stunt courses where you have to drive or fly through all of the rings in the time limit. And I'd have to complete one of these in each region to get the trophy, the greatest son of a bitch who ever lived. Turns out though, I'm not a good pilot. Woo! Yeah, buddy. Oh, I missed it. I'm so dumb. How am I doing this? <laughs> I'm actually terrible. What am I doing? That's the end, right? Yes! We then headed to Fall's End, which is the main hub of this region, and liberating this town was the first main story quest of the game. Okay, I think there's gonna be a big fight here. Okay, let's just run over people. Ah, there we go, this works better. No, I'm dead again. Okay, it almost worked. I'm incredibly dead. Come on! Take him out! Oh my god, we took the plane down. He's out. Look at him. Oh, 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 oh my god. It's probably only a few more people. There we go. Fall's End liberated. After getting rid of all the Peggies in Fall's End, we meet up with the pastor of the town, who asks us if we can help liberate the region whilst we're looking for our captured crew. Well, yeah, of course I will. That's literally the entire point of the game. Unfortunately, we did not get too far before things took a turn for the worst. I've been marked. Why? What's happened? What's happened? Little did I know, but this was all actually meant to happen. It's all part of the main story. After you generate a certain amount of resistance points in an area, you get hunted down and pulled into the next scripted bit of the story. So come on, Dave, mate, it's a video game. Yeah! Lucky for me though, I've got the guys from Fall's End on my side now. So they come and save me and I can get on with what really matters trophies. As you can tell, at this point, after about three hours of gameplay, I had just one of about 50 odd trophies. So it was time to start upping that number. I mean, that's literally the only reason you guys are here watching. So yeah, kind of important. So to get the ball rolling, I went and grabbed the locked and loaded trophy for getting all of the available attachments for a single weapon. This could have been way more annoying, but luckily the bows in this game actually just come with two optics to unlock and nothing else. So I knocked this one out of the park instantly. So this only has two different things. So I think if I buy both of these, I get a trophy. Hey, locked and loaded. There we go. Now, Far Cry games are known for having awesome perk trees. And in this game, I made sure to pick up the wingsuit perk really early so I could start going for the Like a Bird trophy, which required me to accumulate 5,000 meters flown in my wingsuit overall. And to be honest, with just how useful that wingsuit is and how much I was going to use it throughout the game, I probably could have got this one naturally, but I wanted trophies and I wanted them now. So instead, I grabbed a plane, flew it up to max height and wingsuited out of it as far as possible. We're halfway, we need to do that one more time. Now we get wingsuit on, and now we just fly. Oh, please, can I get it before we hit the ground? Oh, like a bird. Use wingsuit to travel more than 5,000 meters. We were so close to the ground there. That wingsuit would quickly become my second favorite equipment in the entire game. Wingsuit away. Ooh. <laughs> but my actual favorite was this bad boy. <gasps> we have this? Why do I have this? That is bad ass. You see, my aim in this game was pretty bad and completing outposts was a real struggle. But with this sniper in hand, I was an absolute demon. So to prove my worth, I would need to get the ghost kill trophy for getting a headshot kill over 150 meters away. And after finding the perfect opportunity, I did not disappoint. Okay, that is 150 meters. If I can land a headshot on this guy, I'll get the trophy. Oh, oh, oh my god, we did it! Yes, perform a headshot kill with any bow or rifle on any cultist more than 150 meters away. I thought that was going to be so difficult. I then just decided to go full 2013 phase clan on a couple more outposts, and after clearing five of them, I got myself another trophy. Ooh, Liberator. Liberate five locations. So that's five outposts we've done. After that, I focused on side missions, including this one where we had to go and retrieve a stolen plane and return it to its owner before defending the airstrip against a ton of bad guys. Wingman. 
Ooh, a wing and a prayer. Fly Nick's plane. Hopefully you're not afraid of heights. So I assume that was for completing that quest. And straight after that, we were captured once again by John Seed, who does some kind of nasty, torturous stuff on Deputy Hudson that I will not be putting in this video. Made that mistake on my Resident Evil video, and now I'm poor, so thanks, YouTube. But we fight our way through a ton of bad guys and escape from John's bunker. I hate this knobhead. You're going down, mate. You are wrath. Be deemed the sin of wrath. Okay, we need to run. Run, 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 run. Now, at this point, we've got a serious bone to pick with John Seed. Like, he's captured us twice. He's tortured our friend in front of us. You'd probably think I'd be wanting to get him gone as quick as possible. Oh. But unfortunately, there was something else I needed to do first. Oh. Arcade trophies. You're probably really confused at what the hell you're even looking at now. Don't worry, I was too. The Far Cry Arcade is a bonus addition to the base Far Cry game, and it's basically a level maker that allows the community to create and share their single player and multiplayer experiences. It's kind of like Forge from Halo or Fortnite Creative, but just bad. And for whatever reason, the devs just had to put a couple of trophies behind the arcade. So I wanted them just out of the way with as quickly as possible. Like seriously, I'd go play that Gollum game from last year rather than play Far Cry Arcade ever again. The first trophy was Arcade Hero, which required me to complete five maps in the Arcade Hero playlist. The playlist just gives you some completely random map, half of which were these boring bot killing simulators that took so long to complete, and the other half of which just made no sense. Am I meant to kill this guy? I give up. What this meant was that I had to continually quit and research until I got maps that actually made an ounce of sense. And after a while, I did manage to complete five. Oh my God. Oh, come on. I thought I had one more to do. That was such a horrible level. How long have I spent doing that? 30 minutes. Next up was the Arcade Enthusiast Trophy, in which I'd need to complete 10 featured maps. This one was a little bit better because I was able to actually pick the map I wanted to play, and I could just complete that same map 10 times. So the first thing I did was head over to the font of knowledge that is the Far Cry Reddit, and consulted the handful of people still playing the game, and they led me to play this map, where I just had to kill a bunch of cowboys. Well, I'm sorry, but this is just such a dreadful way to spend my time. After completing the level 10 times and killing 250 cowboys, the trophy was mine. Please be it. Oh, thank God. Arcade enthusiast. Successfully complete 10 featured arcade maps in Solo Carb. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now it gets worse, because the next two trophies required me to get 100 PvP kills and win 10 PvP matches. And unsurprisingly, with this game releasing six years ago, there's not many people playing Far Cry Arcade multiplayer anymore. I'm actually shocked there was anyone online. Like, someone should go check on these guys. Helldivers 2 exists. You can go play that. You don't have to sit and play this anymore. Lucky for me, I had a friend of mine that was dumb enough to literally buy the game to come and help me just with these two trophies. My lord and savior. He was a little bit late getting on, so I bravely decided to start this grind alone. Once again, the Reddit detectives helped me out by recommending this game mode called Shovel Dodgers, which is basically dodgeball with shovels. And it turns out the dudes who might have been playing this for six years straight are pretty good. I just... This guy's lagging, man. This guy's just lagging. By this point in my five hour arcade grind, I was so invested in winning these games and getting that trophy that I could not contain my excitement when I clutched up the win. Oh, can I pull this back? I need to get him, I need to get him twice without losing. If I die once, this is over. Oh my God. Oh my God, I can do this. I can do this. Oh, okay. I'm even, I'm even. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Can't believe that, man. I'm so happy. So happy. Eventually, my mate came on and we jumped in, played some shovel dodgers. It was quite a lot of fun. <laughs> no, this is this is <laughs> so poor. This is a trophy that you have. To do. <laughs> oh, there we go. I got arcade hunter. Uh, kill 100 enemies in arcade multiplayer maps. Cool. So that's that one done. Moment of truth. Yeah, arcade competitor. Yeah, Win 10 done. featured maps in multiplayer. And arcade player. Reach level 20 in arcade. That's all the arcade ones done. F***ing thank 
God. Whoever it was at Ubisoft who decided it would be a good idea to put these trophies in the game, I understand why your parents hate you. With the arcade completely done and dusted and our mate still on board, we made sure to grab the Hitting It Off trophy for completing three missions in the campaign in co-op. And there's one more bear in the cave, I think. Come here, bear. <laughs> run, run from the bear! I just came round the corner and it was like two foot in front of me. I was like, oh! He's looking at me. Oh, hello. Wait, that was a civilian? <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I did it completely wrong. Can I get you? Um, you don't need to. Just see if you can like complete the mission. Hey, hitting it off. <laughs> Play three quests with a friend. After that, I also managed to grab two more trophies for running over dudes in a mixture of different vehicles. It's going back to the road. Oh, you've got him. Oh my god. Oh! Hey, for fertilizing the land, there we go. Oh, so you've done Using it. Using a track to obliterate five enemies. That's him. Last guy. Last guy. This is this is it. This is the trophy. There we go. Squash and run. Run over and kill 20 enemies. I've been running over enemies for like 10 minutes. Half of them don't count. So many of the trophies in this game just are buggy or are unresponsive. Next, I'm about to complete a series of quests by this weird guy, Larry. He thinks aliens exist and wants to go get probed by them or some shit. We need to complete all of Larry's quests to get our hands on the science fact trophy. So after freeing Larry from his initial failed experiment, I actually got myself another trophy for completing three side missions so far in the game. There we go. Easy mission. We need to complete four missions for this guy and we get a trophy. Oh, what now? Complete three side missions. Okay, didn't didn't realize I was going to get that then, but I'll take it. I then went and destroyed some satellite dishes, collected some alien objects, and rerouted the power to Larry's lab to complete all of his quests. Godspeed, Larry. Jesus. Oh my god. It worked. Ah, and what's this? I think I do remember this. There we go. Science fact. Put aside skepticism and help Larry. Next on the menu was the trophy scavenger for completing three prepper stashes. Okay, let's swim back across. There we go. Prepper stash done. Long range lock pick. Oh, scavenger. Follow the clues to end three treasure hunts. Oh, amazing. Solving the puzzles for these treasure hunts was actually a lot of fun every time I did it, and they were super useful to give us a bunch of perk points and especially money that we'd have to use for the big spender trophy later on. That one was going to be a grind. I then went and completed another side mission for retrieving this massive 18-wheeler with guns strapped to it, during which I grabbed myself another easy trophy. I just realized this. Oh my god, road gunner. While driving or leaning out a vehicle, kill 25 enemies. Nice free trophy. Easy peasy. And then next up, I purchased three vehicles for my garage. Let's grab it this, this thing. Oh, stocked garage. Buy three vehicles. Now, two of the seemingly tougher trophies on the list were the death from above trophy for destroying four vehicles at once with a single plane bomb and the ace killer trophy for destroying 10 planes with any aerial vehicle. But in true trophy hunting fashion, I cheesed the sh out of these two. Okay, we've got our four vehicles, finally. So now what I need to do is park them all near here, drop a bomb, and hopefully this will work. I really hope this works. Oh, please, please work. <laughs> there we go. Death from above. Drop a bomb from a plane and destroy or disable four vehicles at once. <laughs> okay, so now that I've got this plane here, now begins the fun process of basically just shooting my own planes. So it says vehicle delivery in progress. We get in our plane and then we just shoot this. I pressed the bomb button. Why did I do that? Hey, there we go. Ace killer. Destroy 10 planes while driving any aerial view. I'm trying to tell you what trophy I've got. Why am I getting blown up? After liberating a couple more outposts and completing some weird side missions like killing a moose high on drugs, yeah, that one was really strange. <laughs> we actually did fill up the resistance bar fully, which triggered the final confrontation with John Seed. Look, I think this might actually... Kicking the hornet's nest. Trigger the wrath of a herald. Okay, 
Yep, we finished the area. John calls us back to Fall's End, where he threatens to kill the pastor, but we pull a little switcheroo on him. Let's just say yes. Oh! I did not expect that. We blew his ear off. I'm glad I refilled my ammo. Jesus. Oh my god, that was a teammate. That was the pasta. Oh my god, the pasta. I didn't realize that. I'm, I, I, I am happy to die here. Yeah, I'm such a dumbass. Yeah, let's get in. Let's go. Eventually, it all culminates with a dogfight in the sky to finish off John Seed. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Oops. He's going down. Come on, one more hit. One more hit. Come on. Oh no, he's so close. Oh my god, down he goes. He's parachuting out. Look at him. He's flying around in the air like a crazy man. You bitch. This world is on the brink. You can feel it in your bones. Now, if you think killing John Seed means the region's over, think again, because the final thing we had to do was head back to John's bunker to save Deputy Hudson and all of the other captives. And I can safely say now that this bit of the game was a struggle. Oh my god, it's so it's okay. I didn't realize there was a guy with a fat machine gun in there. Oh my god, this is getting a bit crazy. This is getting a bit crazy. No, I got stuck. No, just survive! Come on! <sighs> I can't get anywhere! No, how am I? I'm just getting beaten up! <laughs> Another takedown? Oh my god, close and personal. What do, we, what do we do that for? Perform 25 close combat kills. Amazing. I can't really read that right now, though. I need to run. Kill him. We out? Oh, we did it. That was hard. That was really hard. Liberation. Very good. Holland Valley region liberated. Saving Deputy Hudson. Save Deputy Hudson. Very self-explanatory trophy. With John's region done, Faith's was up next. But before heading in guns blazing, I went and grabbed one of the more obscure trophies, Where's the Beef, for killing a bull with my bare hands. And this was actually made incredibly easy just by crafting this drug in game that gives you super strength. I would strongly recommend any vegans or animal rights activists just, just turn away for the next 10 seconds or so. And then we will consume this. Come here. <laughs> One shot. Where's the beef? How dare you? Tenderize a bull with your bare hands to death. Oh my lord. I'm going to get some of this when I'm fighting some of the bad guys. This is going to make things easy. Look at this. Kapow! Oh, kapow! The first stop in Faith's region was Hope County Jail, where a bunch of resistance members are held up, holding out against the Peggies. It's here that we meet up again with Sheriff Whitehorse from the beginning of the game. He lets us know that this region's main problem is the production of bliss. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but this is basically the drug that makes people go completely do lally before losing their minds completely and turning to Eden's game. So the first mission we were given was to disable the water pumps that were delivering bliss into the water supply and turning everyone crazy. Completing this quest would give me the sewer rat trophy. But unfortunately, we didn't make it too far. We have hit the ground earlier than I would have liked to. Oh god. Hello, Faith. Oh no. Let me tell you a different story. I'm not gonna lie, she's kind of bad. Like, come on, she is. Everyone's thinking it. The crazy ones are always the best ones, guys. Remember that. Show your faith and jump. Um, can I, can I not? Apparently we have to. Geranimo. Whoa. Oh my God, there's actually loads of dead people here. She literally drugs them and then like makes them go nuts and then convinces them to jump off. Oh my God. Now back in the real world, we finally get to the water treatment plant. We blow up all the water pumps and grab ourselves that trophy. It didn't. There we go. Clean water act. Yeah, sewer rat. Destroy cult water treatment and make them thirst for revenge. Yes. The next couple of hours was just more liberating areas, rescuing civilians, sniping a load of bad dudes. But eventually, we got tricked by another one of Faith's illusions. Why'd I bother one? What? No. 
I tried to liberate her and it was fake. This time around, we don't really talk to Faith much, which sucks because I love her. Whoa. <laughs> uh, there must be some bliss in this. <laughs> Instead, we actually come face to face with Joseph for the first time in a while. And he tries to tell us all about his pilgrimage and all his plans, but we just kindly ignore all of that for now. Oh, walk the path. Discover the bliss. Well, at least we've got a trophy for it. So the next main quest back in the real world takes us over to liberate an outpost before burning a load of bliss with a flamethrower. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, it's just not as fun without Skrillex playing in the background. Like, if you know, you know. Now at this point, I was absolutely flying through this region, so it wasn't long before we got another unexpected visit. Oh, and it's a uh, civilian as well. Ah, I think we were due a bit of Faith's time, actually. And this was definitely one of the weirdest trips I'd had on Bliss so far. Oh, it's the Marshal. Come on. Don't think it, I don't think his head's screwed on. Where are you going? He's <laughs> picking flowers, having a little stroll. We need to save this guy. Marshal, come here. Come on. We need the Marshal. Come on, mate. Oh, we're back again. Oh, we actually did. Oh, we actually got the Marshal. But he's still, he's still not with it. No, I feel like he's still scrambled. I feel like mm -hmm. something's gonna happen. Don't trust him. Yeah, I agree with that. Don't trust him yet because he's still, he's still not okay. That completed. Oh, blissful. Save the marshal from the bliss. Hey, another trophy. The next side mission that I decided to complete for more resistance points was to get three grizzly bear skins. Now, by this point in the game, I have not done much hunting, but unsurprisingly, there was a grindy trophy called Been There, Done That, and finding these bears was gonna help me out with that. <laughs> but somehow, an hour later, I still hadn't completed this mission, and I was losing it. Grizzly bears, where are you? Oh, here comes the black bear. Let's just kill the black bear. There's another black bear. That's another black bear, isn't it? How? I'm running out of ideas. <gasps> that sounds like a bear. <gasps> There's a grizzly! <gasps> no! Why have I died? No, no, get me up, get me up. Did I kill it? Did I kill it? No, there's no way. I, I swear I shot it like four times. I'm actually just shocked at what I've just done. I heard a bear, by the way, so I'm just like really locked in. That's one. That's a bear. That's a grizzly. It's down here. If this somehow despawns, I'm going to lose my mind. Oh my god, that's it. That is it. Oh my god, we f***. Did it. So with that boring mission out of the way with, I was craving some adrenaline. So at this point I said screw it, I made a detour to complete a Clutch Nixon in Faith's region and Jacob's region. Completing both of these would mean I'd completed a Clutch Nixon in every region on the map, giving me that trophy that I'd mentioned earlier on. And I can say with 100% certainty that driving a buggy through Rings of Fire down a mountain is a far more fulfilling and fun gaming experience than hunting Brother Bear for an hour. Yes! Come on. You know you want to. There we go. The greatest son of a bitch that ever lived. All that was left to do now was fill the resistance bar as quick as possible. And whilst I was progressing decently quickly, I was still taking quite a long time to finish every outpost that I was doing. If only there was some weapon of mass destruction I could use to just clear outposts insanely quickly. Oh wait. There was. So what I'm going to do today, I've got a little plan. I've seen, I did a little bit of research of how I could make things go a little bit quicker when I've been struggling. Yes, the Combat R31 Air Buzzer. It's a prestige vehicle. And this thing is pretty insane. And my plan is to try and clear this outpost as quick as possible. Oh my lord. Oh, there was literally a truck parked up the road. Great. I Just look how insane this is. Oh, it's so easy, guys. Okay, that's both of the alarms gone. Oh my god, I'm taking some serious damage. Why have I not been doing this the whole game? Oh, it's taking so long for some reason, and I could have just been doing this. Yeah, outposts, not an issue anymore. And it wasn't long before we filled that resistance bar all the way up. Oh, there we go. 
Faith seed is taunting you from the bliss. Faith then pulls us into the bliss again, where we find out that the marshal definitely should not have been trusted. We then fight our way into Hope County Jail that's been taken over by the Peggies, where we find out that the sheriff's now been captured. As we leave the jail, it's time for our final bliss trip, where this time we face off against Faith. And this boss fight was like something out of Elden Ring or an MMO. It was awesome. Jesus. What the? This is different. Oh my. It's actually so difficult to see her. Okay, one more, one more. We got her. Die, bitch. Oh, we got her. You don't know what it is you're doing, do you? Get wrecked. Just like back in John's region, the final job was then to head to Faith's bunker and free the sheriff. But this time, we also had the important task of destroying the main Bliss production lines once and for all. And this was way easier than John's bunker, so before we knew it, we were home free. Go! Oh, we're out. Yeah! Region 2 done! Saving Sheriff Whitehorse. Save Sheriff Whitehorse. Well, wow, that's simple, simple trophy, that one. So now it was time for the final region, ruled by none other than Jacob Seed. But before jumping into it, we first of all had to head back to John's region to complete a mission that would unlock the special delivery trophy. And let me just say, after a spree of tense and serious moments, this mission was pure, unadulterated madness. <laughs> We gotta drive to the midwife's house. We gotta deliver the baby. This is the most important quest we've done so far. What the hell happened here? Drive, drive, drive. It's probably the most traumatic delivery of a child ever to happen. This game is madness. We done it? That was actually quite terrifying. Wanna come meet your goddaughter? Yeah! Childbirth! Woo! No, but in all seriousness, that is a wholesome mission right there. Yeah, I like that one. And there we go, special delivery. Ensure a baby's safe passage into this world. Not sure about safe, um, if you just watched what happened there, but uh, hey, another trophy down. I then went and grabbed myself the fashion first trophy for buying a bunch of outfits, but I accidentally didn't press record. That was actually the only time I did that during 30 hours of gameplay recording, so uh, I'm pretty proud of myself. So I realized I wasn't recording at this point, but I have bought myself a thousand dollars worth of clothing, which grabbed me this trophy. And there it is, fashion first, purchase a thousand dollars in clothing. Nice and simple. After that, I went to complete a mission where I had to lead a cougar back home for another trophy. No, not that kind of cougar, the real kind. Secure Miss Mabel's home with Peach's help. Go on, Peaches. Kill them all. Woo! Oh, she's crazy. Okay, come on, Peaches. Come on, Peaches. Oh, she's got Peaches on her little chain. As you can tell, I'm very manly. And we got Peachy Keen. Bait Peaches into going back home. I then headed into Jacob's region for the first time, and my first thought was to destroy a cult property to get myself a trophy. Well, there we go, Troublemaker. And there's a wolf in front of me, so I will kill that. But we get it for discovering the joys of destroying cult property in every region. Get off me, get off me. Next up was the trophy, Ignible Beasts. For this one, I'd have to kill a bison with only melee weapons. But this was actually really easy by using the same upgrade that I used for tenderizing that cow earlier on. Oh, it's perfect. This is a free trophy. Kabam! Ignible, <laughs> ignible beasts! That was so lucky that that thing came and ran at me. Oh my god, get off me. So all of those were easy trophies. Now time for some more challenging ones. First up was the trophy Explosive Surprise for killing five enemies with sabotaged vehicles. Sabotage is another one of the perks in the game that I'd grabbed earlier on, and it enabled me to interact with the hood of a car, making it explode five seconds later. And I actually thought this one was going to be really easy, but every single time I would sabotage a vehicle, the dudes would get out the car, run away, or just kill me before it exploded. So yeah, a bit annoying. Sit, stay near, and you should blow up and we'll get a trophy. 
There we go. Explosive surprise. And we died. <laughs> uh, kill five enemies with sabotage vehicles. That took a bit longer than I wanted. The other grindy trophy I wanted to get out the way was Opportunity Knox for distracting 15 enemies with rocks. Oh, for this one, I had to head to an outpost, chuck rocks from far away, landing in the perfect spot that would attract a nearby enemy. Then I had to hope that the enemy would actually register that I'd done it properly. Then I had to rinse and repeat on every bad guy at the outpost before finally traveling to a different one and doing it again. Unsurprisingly, this was mind-numbingly boring. But eventually, after about 300 rocks thrown, we got the trophy. I just don't know how many I need to throw. This is thrilling, isn't it? Oh my god, we did it! Wow, I didn't expect to do it there. Opportunity knocks using rocks or cans distract 15 enemies. What was good is that all this trophy grinding actually led to me filling up that resistance bar enough to get my first meeting with Jacob Seed. And he is pretty terrifying. We will call the herd. We've gone like religious crazy guy. We've gone druggy in your head crazy girl. And now we've got like army crazy guy. Oh my God, this is, what the hell is this? Yeah, I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what the hell was going on here, but it was just giving me PTSD of that COD 4 shooting range trophy we did. God, that sucked. But luckily, when we came to, a bunch of good guys we hadn't met yet had come to save us. And the leader of these guys is actually Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead. Oh, no, wait. Um, What's this guy called again? Uh, Oh, Eli. Yes, Eli. Sorry, we've met so many characters in this game at this point, I'm just losing track. But actually, we hadn't met enough characters yet to pop the trophy Ain't No Wallflower for talking to 50 citizens in game. We'll come back to that one a bit later. For now, Eli brings us back to a bunker called The Wolf's Den, which just like Falls End and Hope County Jail is the main hub for this region where we pick up most of our missions. Oh, only you. Successfully complete the first trial. Oh, I did not expect to get a trophy there. Now, there's actually one game mechanic in Far Cry 5 that I've barely mentioned yet, and that's the companion system. Basically, there's a load of special characters in the game that you can recruit and bring along to fight with you after you've completed their missions, and they're all pretty unique. We've actually already met a bunch of them. There's Nick Rye, who's the guy whose plane we got back, back in John's region. There's Peaches, the cougar we saved earlier. And there's even a freaking grizzly bear called Cheeseburger. However, all of these, and many more in the game all just pale in comparison to the undisputed goat companion that we were about to meet. You see that steaming pile of disappointment over there praying? Hurt Jr. Dumber than a coal bucket. He takes after his mama. Okay, this dude is literally the definition of make America great again, at least in my mind. I'm sorry, I don't want to go on assuming nobody's gender or nothing. I, I mean, I don't mean no disrespect. I just call all my homies. Dude or bro or man, you know, regardless of vegetalia or penile-ness-ness. -ness. This is Herc, and he's pretty much what British people like me think every American is like. This guy's just a dumbass, isn't he? He's just a complete dumbass. Bro Buffet. I might have to start using that in real life. This, this dude, he might be actually be one of the best characters in the game. Like, I hate him and love him at the same time. Oh my god, Herc, what the hell? Dude, what is that? Where did you get that? He's crazy. Why did we not go and get this guy at the star? I would have brought this guy along for the whole journey with me. Oh, but I can tell already that we're gonna be best friends. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Herc. You are my best bud in this game. With Herc on board, we could now go for the trophy Herc Locker for getting Herc to destroy 15 vehicles with his fat rocket launcher. And it was at this point that I realized that Herc is just completely overpowered. So I think if I mark that, he will shoot it with his rocket launcher. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, that's that's a civilian. I'm pretty sure that was a civilian. Herc, shoot them! Oh my god! Now, now him! <laughs> oh my god, he's a beast! He's just an absolute animal! Kill all the civilians! Yeah, go on, Herc. Oh my god, I'm just starting the apocalypse. It's the Herc apocalypse. There we go, the Herc locker. What a beast. Truly bond with Herc by destroying 15 vehicles together. We are 
We are best friends with Herc. So now that I had Herc with me feeling unstoppable and I'd traveled around most of the map, I decided to go for the Pack Rat Trophy for grabbing one of each collectible item. This included finding things like lighters, whiskey crates, and bobbleheads, and before long, the trophy was mine. Pack Rat. Grab one of each collectible item. You never know when it will come in handy. We were then captured by Jacob again before rerunning through the nightmare shooting gallery. Once again, no clue what was going on here. All that was left to do after that in this region was get the resistance points we needed. So we headed and did some missions like securing this hotel from bad guys, which was easy because Herc is literally him. Oh, he's in the helicopter. Herc. <laughs> Oh my lord. And I also needed to complete a couple more prepper stashes to get enough perk points to obtain half of the perks in the game for another trophy. We'll go for health boost and this should give us a trophy. Survivalist. Purchase half of all perks available. That's 25 out of 50. How the hell would you ever get all 50? And before I knew it, I was back in Jacob's nightmare shooting gallery again. Still have no idea what the hell I was in here for, but... I was pretty good at speed running this at this point. I mean, look at me go. Turns out, though, that is exactly what Jacob wanted. Wait a minute. What just happened? I have a really bad feeling. I actually killed Eli. Oh my god, I, d I did not expect that. Over all the times he did this trancing to you, he basically trained you to memorize every location of every opponent to kill everyone in the wolf's den. Oh my god. So wait, so that was that like the layout of the wolf's den at the end? Oh my god. To get revenge for Eli, it's finally time to take out Jacob's seed. And I'm going to be honest, for how much the game builds this guy up to be some hardcore military guy, he was a piece of piss. Is he dead? That was so anticlimactic. Yeah, the sni I think the sniper's actually broken in this game. If, you if you're if you even slightly good with using it. I will just die already. I actually die. I think this guy might be the worst of the three. Okay, well, this guy can get out of there. Just like in the other two regions, we then head to Jacob's bunker, take out all the bad dudes, and save Deputy Pratt to liberate the region. There we go. Liberated. Let's go. Saving Deputy Pratt. Save Deputy Pratt. Basically, finish the third region. So at this point, with all three regions completed, we could head straight to Joseph's Island to trigger the finale of the game. But going there now would essentially end the game, and I still had some trophies to get. So we started off with the extra crafty trophy for crafting 25 recipes. Okay, I'm hoping we've got enough now to finish off what we need to. Come on. There we go, extra crafty, craft 25 recipes. The next trophy I was pretty certain I had to be close to finishing was Ain't No Wallflower, which as I mentioned earlier on, meant I had to speak to 50 different citizens of Hope County. And it was just my luck that I was even closer than I thought I was. Oh my God, how lucky is that? Ain't No Wallflower, we were literally like four dialogues off. I, I thought we had to be near that. Who are these people? Speak to 50 citizens of Hope County. Yeah, I mean, we're basically at the end of the game, so I assumed we must have been pretty close. Now, there was one trophy that was sending my anxiety through the roof, and that's Big Spender that I mentioned earlier on. As a reminder, to unlock this trophy, I had to spend $50,000 on vehicles, which is a ton of cash in this game. I'd been very careful for the entire playthrough to make sure that I was banking cash into vehicle purchases throughout, so I wouldn't just have to go and grind a ton of missions now to get the cash. I needed. And I kid you not, this might be the luckiest, most unlikely trophy pop you will ever see. Who knows, maybe I can buy one vehicle and it will be enough to push me over. Is there even anything I can buy? Are there any crap cars? I can buy this. Oh! Oh my god! Big spender! <laughs> yes! Oh my god, I'm on one dollar! I'm on one dollar. Holy. The final three trophies I needed before the end of the game went nicely hand in hand, and I'd been putting off doing these until the very end. First up, I had to complete all of the hunting and fishing challenges, which basically meant killing and looting three or four of every animal in the game, and then catching a couple of every available fish. And this wasn't even slightly enjoyable. Just remember how long it took me to find one grizzly bear earlier on? Yeah, this was like that, but just endless. Turkeys. Oh, this is so boring. Uh, 
what, why would this be a trophy you have to get? Wait for a bird to come out of a tree. Oh, oh, an NPC killed one. Okay, that's one. Oh my God, the NPCs killed two. Thank you, random woman. You are my savior today, my absolute savior. With all the animal hunting done, it was now on to the fishing part and I'd skillfully avoided doing any fishing for the entire game so far. So I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Can I not catch this fish? Ugh. Oh my god, we didn't even catch it after all that. However, alongside this, I also needed to unlock all four fishing rods in the game for the trophy Hope County Master Angler. The first two rods I could just buy straight from the shop, so nice and easy. And then the third rod I got from completing a specific fishing quest line, which once again, wasn't too hard. But it was getting that fourth rod that was the true grind. To get that final fishing rod, I'd have to beat the fishing weight records in every region for every kind of fish in the game. Which was a problem because I will repeat my Myself, I did not know how to fish. So it's definitely a steep learning curve, but in the process of doing this, I would also complete all of those fishing challenges I needed to go along with the hunting ones I'd already completed. So I got to work. Oh my God. 5.6, I need six. Oh, there we go, six pound. My six pound salmon, come on. Four pounds? This is the big one I've been looking for. Six pounder, six pounder. Oh, come on! Oh, yeah, we're doing it all day until I catch this f***ing fish. There we go. That's a six pounder. Can we get a three pounder? Well, there's been there, done that, which is to complete all hunting and fishing challenges. That took forever. Three pounder? Yes! That's it. Find fishing rods. Why don't we have it? Okay, I made a mistake and I've missed one of the salmon. It's this one in the top right, which I think is a Chinook salmon. So we need to go and get that. Okay, 27 pounder we need. It's a big boy. Can we do it in one? Yes! That should have unlocked it. How is it still locked? Oh, there we go. Hope County Master Angler. Okay, so I needed to fast travel, I think, for it to actually kick in. But there we go, acquire all four fishing rods. I then just had to go and sell 20 fish at the shop to give me another trophy. Let's see if this gives us the trophy. Fish market, sell 20 fish for cash. Genuinely, I don't even think like Guantanamo Bay torture would get me to fish in a video game again. Like, So now finally, with only one trophy left for the platinum, we were ready to head to Joseph's Island and take him out once and for all. How did you all get caught again? Oh, they're all like under control. <gasps> it's all the companions. Oh no. Resist or walk away. I will fight every day to take everything away from you, you sick, vile bastard. What the hell? Oh God, not bliss. Not bliss. And this whole sequence was literally like something out of the Avengers. It was all of the good guys, the companions we'd met along the way, all back together for a final showdown. Oh, it was awesome. Huck, come here, man. Get up, bro. And before long, Joseph was done for. But remember, guys, the devs of this game are complete psychopaths. They put trophies in the arcade, which I still hate them for, and they made us kill Eli. And they were about to put the biggest twist of the game right at the end of it. The wrath of God upon the earth. What? No. What is that? Is that him? Did he do that? Some dude somewhere just dropped a 30 kill streak and just dropped it straight on Montana. What the hell is going on? This is like an apocalypse. This is so unexpected. I, I genuinely had no clue what the hell was going on. He's just in the back. Oh, I should probably look forward. Together forever. Get to the end. That should give us the platinum as well. We always had faith in you. Obtain all the trophies. There's still a cutscene going on. I've got my platinum and... Oh, 
I just can't believe it. We've got the platinum finally. I am so happy, but what the sh is happening? This Dutch. Oh my god, Dutch, no. No, what the hell is happening? I am your father, and you are my child. And together we will march to Eden's gate. I can't believe it. Is that it? That's it? Everything we have spent the last, like, 30 hours doing for that. Chained back inside the bunker, the world blown to smithereens, all of our friends dead, I assume, and with the only person we have there is Joseph Seed. I don't get it! Why? Well, that was the Far Cry 5 Platinum. Uh, probably one of the strangest endings to a game that I've ever played, but such a fun time throughout. Bit of a grind here and there, but overall fairly simple. Let me know down in the comments below what kind of games you'd like me to Platinum next. And whilst you're here, you need to go and watch this video next, which is a Platinum which was so much harder than this Far Cry one, and it kind of made me lose my mind. Um, yeah, go and watch it now.